guys, how's it going? In today's video, I wanted to give you an update and a tour of our hay rack project. They are doing absolutely amazing. Like I couldn't be more pleased with how they've grown and how they've reacted with each other, like how compatible they've been. Um, I didn't know, it was an experiment, you know, putting new plants together. Um, also, I didn't know how they would do being so exposed to the elements. I mean, they get a ton of wind up here. They get full sun and it's been upwards of 100 degrees. Um, and then, you know, on top of the rocks where you've got that radiant heat too, I just didn't know how they would do and they're just doing so beautifully. Um, so you can see right here is the entrance to our property. Uh, we've got two of the largest state planters from Crescent Garden and they are full of a uh, arborvita and then I've got super tunia bordeaux and I think that just like crazy growth on these they're just beautiful they've mounted up gorgeous and they're starting to spill over they've really made a good like beautiful statement uh, and then we've got 40 hay racks on this fence line these are from garden artisans you guys should definitely check out um, their website they've got some really cool stuff uh, so we did put up two videos. I checked the dates before we did this video today. Uh, we installed the hair axe on May 7th and then we planted them on May 8th. So they haven't even been growing for two full months yet. We're getting close. But uh, so this is kind of like the midsummer update and then I'm expecting them to do even more, like grow even more. And I wouldn't even be surprised if they get close to touching the ground by the end of the season. So let me go through how we installed them. So in our first video on May 7th, we did kind of show you a lot of detail about what we had to do. And we will link both videos down below if you want to check them out. But we had to come up with our own kind of bracket system because there were no brackets available for the top of vinyl fencing. So we ended up using some two by four like building brackets that we painted white and it's worked out really well. We didn't know if our fence was going to be able to handle the weight and it has. It's holding up really beautifully. I mean, I haven't really even noticed any kind of bowing or anything. There are approximately, approximately uh, eight and a half feet or so between the, each of the vertical posts and there's two hair racks between each post. Um, in that first video, we also ran drip system and I think that's been essential to the success of this project. So we have a fence or a faucet rather on the very end of our property over there in the corner and we just hooked up some black vinyl poly tubing and ran it along the top of all the hay racks. So it just runs um, kind of like on the back side of the hay rack right along the fence. And then we put four individual emitter emitters in each 44 inch hay rack. So there's uh, four of them spread out equally and they each have a two gallon per hour emitter on the end. And we run them for 15 minutes every day at 11 a.m. And I think that's super, super important to have, especially if you're gonna do something like this, like certainly you don't have to do this scale of a project for something beautiful. You know, you could do a hay rack or two and it would be gorgeous. Um, but I think having water set up or having the ability to water consistently is like of the utmost importance. So having them on a timer, so I don't have to remember to come out here every day and turn them on and off, or I don't have to do them by hand because that would just take way too much time. We also have our fertilizer injector system, which we did a video on that too. We'll link that video down below and it explains more about how that works, but it's something I can hook up in line um, in our drip system. And it just kind of facilitates, uh, facilitates fertilizer down all the tubing and it feeds every basket all at the same time. So I don't have to do you know, the traditional watering can method, which would take forever. But of course, if you only had a few containers or a few hay racks, the watering can method is perfect. I've done it for years. In fact, I did this property for the last two years with watering can. That's why I was desperate for an injector system because we have way too much going on. It was taking me four hours to fertilize every week. And who has time for that? I don't, I don't have four hours every week. And so sometimes they would get skipped. And I don't think that these would perform as well without that consistent fertilizer. These are huge blooming plants. Like they are producing so much color and so much blooms. And to do that, they need a lot of food um, because the reservoirs aren't enormous and they, you know, there's not a lot of soil and nutrients for to, them to draw from. So they are kind of relying on you to give them what they need. Um, so that's the only maintenance I've had to do out here. All I have to do is just wheel that dosatron out here, hook it up once a week and that's it. I haven't touched these plants since I planted them. You know, I did the, the normal grooming and stuff right when I planted them and that's it. So all of these plants are self-cleaning. They do not need to be deadheaded at all. Um, and they just keep on looking like this all the time, which is amazing. So let me go over the four plants I used in these hay racks real quick. First of all, we have Superbina Large Lilac Blue, which has performed absolutely beautifully. I mean, look at this. So we've got the blooms all over the top. They're kind of going over the back and then they're coming all the way down here. Like that is a really, really good plant. I think I only put three of those three of those in each hay rack and that's how they look <laughs> that's amazing then we've got of course super tuna bordeaux 
which is gorgeous. And in fact, we posted a couple of um, update pictures between when we planted them and now, and it looks like from afar, like when we're standing back getting the whole line of these, it looks like it's all Super Junior Bordeaux, but it's not. It's a really pretty equal blend of Super Bean, a large lilac blue and the Super Junior Bordeaux. Um, but it has this very purple effect, very purple look, which is my favorite. I love, oh, they just turned on. I could hear the water running. <laughs> it's 11 a.m. Um, but yeah, it does look very purple, uh, which makes me happy because I'm a purple fan uh, in the garden. But I also used Super Junior Royal Magenta, nice little pink accent. I knew that these were not gonna be quite as um, prolific, uh, I guess you could say, as the other two purple ones, but that's perfect because I wanted it just to be an accent. I didn't want that to be the overall feel was that bright, bright pink. Uh, and then we did use some lemon coral sedum. Now this was the big, biggest experiment of them all. Um, I didn't know if lemon coral was gonna be able to handle the amount of water that we're giving them. I didn't know if they were gonna be able to keep up in terms of vigor. Um, looking back, I might have maybe not planted quite as many things all in the same hay rack. I might've uh, kind of just pared it down a little bit so that the lemon coral had a little bit more room to grow um, so that you could see it a little bit better. But you can, when you're driving straight on, you can see quite a bit of it. There's pops of green, like, you know, it's doing pretty good. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. You can't see it from the way we were um, taking pictures before, the pictures that we have posted for you guys to see. You can't really see it from the side, but you can definitely see it from the front. Um, so I don't know. I mean, the choice was either, I thought I could use a sweet potato vine, which gives you that nice bright green. But if you guys have ever grown those, you know they get huge. And I didn't really want that to be the overwhelming look of the container. I didn't want that to be what you see first. I wanted flowers to be the, the main attractor. And they definitely are. I think the lemon coral is a really pretty accent and it's doing great with the amount of water. Here comes Russell. Yeah, they're doing wonderful with the amount of water. They're doing great with the amount of fertilizer, with the amount of sun. Um, we've had a super windy, like early summer, like really windy. In fact, it's been kind of hard to film videos because we kind of have to wait till it's not gale force winds out here um, so that you can actually hear audio and stuff like that. So these have done well with all of it. A couple other questions that I wanted to answer was what type of gravel we use. So this is three quarter chip. This was actually not a project we were planning on, but when we got the hay racks done, we were kind of looking at it and it was just pasture. It was just like dirt and weeds right underneath here. And we thought it just, you know, you've got something so beautiful. You don't want the weeds and the white cause we've really alkaline soil. So it dries really white. We didn't want that white soil just kind of like detracting from the way this looks. So this is actually not our property. Our property goes right to the fence and then it's our neighbor's pasture, but we talked with them and they gave us permission to kind of, um, to put like 15, 20 feet of gravel here. Um, as well as we're gonna start planting up that far corner to kind of mask the poles back there. Um, so that was really, really nice of them. We had somebody come in and, and like get the area ready. He scraped all of the stuff that was currently here and then put the gravel in and got it nice and level. We also have, you'll see some rocks along here. Some are real and some are not. <laughs> so the reason why we did this is that there are irrigation access points. There's four of them along this, um, area and they are what feeds this pasture so there was big tall fence posts along here which also detracted from the way this looked so they let us remove those and put some artificial rocks over the access we did cluster some real rocks around especially these first two there's one right at the entry and then this one here because we have a lot of trucks and trailers that turn around right in here and we wanted to make sure that this this one's the fake one we wanted to make sure that these were protected and that nothing could get broken um, or happen to those irrigation points so the other project that came about because of these hay racks was an enclosure for our dumpster because we were standing back take, trying to take pictures this way and all you could see with this was this bright blue dumpster showing up so we are currently having a fence built it's not done yet um, so that we can put the dumpster right back in here. There'll be a couple of gates that we can close and then you won't be able to see it. I did, did decide to go with black like we did with our black picket fence. So this is just a black stain. So there are three different types of stain. There's one that shows a lot of the wood grain, a lot of the wood um, through it. And then there's one that's kind of a midway and then there's a really opaque one. And I went with the one in the middle. Anyway, the whole reason why I chose black was because I wanted it to disappear. Um, I thought about doing a white vinyl enclosure, but I think so that it matched, you know, all the rest of the fencing, but I think it would have just shown up. I think you would have been like, oh, there's a dumpster right there. But I think having it be black, it'll kind of disappear into the background. And Aaron and I decided as we do more projects and start, uh, when, when we start transitioning areas, we're gonna go with more black accents, more black fencing. 
rather than the white. And I like real wood, wood fencing rather than vinyl. That's kind of my preference anyway. So, you know, as we do these projects, we'll kind of go with this sort of color for now, but I think it'll look really, really good when it's all done and buttoned up and you don't see the big blue dumpster. I'm so excited. So on this other side of the opening, there is another one of the estate planters with Bordeaux. And then there's just one hay rack on this side, which I actually was a little nervous about. I didn't know, I knew we needed it because I knew that I wanted it to look like a complete project. Not like, oh, there's one pot and then there's nothing on this fence. But I didn't know with the surrounding trees if they was gonna get too much shade, but it is really doing well and it's looking just like the others. So I'm really, really pleased with that. So that's pretty much it for the update. Um, I just kind of wanted to reiterate the three things that I think would give you, that give you the most success with projects like this, with really any containers. One, give the plants the right light. These plants want full sun, they get full sun, and that's how they look because of it. Um, if they don't get enough sun, they get leggy, they get straggly, they don't bloom as well. So it's really important. Number two is consistent watering. So important, especially if you live somewhere where it gets really hot. It gets upwards of 100 degrees here in the summer or over 100 um, for weeks on end and you have to be so consistent. I see questions about what time of day I think is the best to water, morning or evening. I don't think it matters when you water. I think it matters that you do it cons at a consistent time every day. And the third thing is fertilizer. Like I said before, if you want them to bloom like this, you got to feed them a lot of food because you know they just don't have a lot to draw from it's just really important so anyway i'm just so excited that we were able to give you such a successful update midsummer i'm hoping that the next update that we give you will see even more growth and even more flowers i'm hoping that they eventually reach the ground wouldn't that be amazing i'm just I'm just thrilled with the way it looks and I'm just so excited to share it with you guys. So anyway, thanks so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye.